Okay, so this is just a short review of some of the broad concepts of solutions that we have covered in the last couple of weeks. Um, and we're going to be going on to study acids and bases, but uh, which are sort of uh, examples of properties of certain types of solutions. That's not what we're gonna need to know right now, but eventually we will. Um, but for now, we just want to sort of understand solutions generally. And uh, one thing it's important to know, uh, you know, a solution is really just a homogeneous mixture right? Really, a, a, a homogeneous mixture is a solution, um, or sometimes called homogeneous mixture. Um, and uh, what is the thing that makes up that mixture? Well, it's, it's a mixture of a solute plus a solvent, and together that is a solution. So the solute is the thing in smaller quantity that gets dissolved and the solvent, well, that's the thing that is a larger quantity that dissolves the solute. And together we call it a solution. Um, and um, I always like to say that this is, you know, a classic example of one of these things would be, you know, you could have salt plus water, and that would make a solution of salt water. Um, okay, so that's, uh, you know, the basics of what a solution is. Um, now, what are some things that uh, we can kind of understand about solutions? What's a way, to under, uh, a way to understand a solution is we have this concept of concentration. So we have this concept of concentration which sort of means how strong the solution is. And we've got a, spe a special word for that called molarity. So molarity is a measure of concentration. And you might remember that if something is concentrated, it means that there is a lot of solute, it means there's lots of solute. And if it's, uh, maybe we should say lots of solute per solution. That might be a better way to say it. Lots of solute per solution. And if it's dilute, then it means there's little solute per solution. Um, and, you know, we could just say maybe a little solute or a, maybe we could just say lots of solute or little solute, but what's a lot, what's a little, sometimes it's vague. So it's a little more specific when we say lots of solute per a certain amount of solution or a little amount of solute per a certain amount of solution. And so we can define this more precisely. We can say the molarity is defined by the number of moles per the volume of solution. Um, and if we understand that, then we can understand uh, something about how to do what's called a dilution. So when we do a dilution, when we're doing a dilution, that means we're, um, we're making we're making something less 
concentrated, or we could say more dilute, either way, less concentrated or more dilute. from a stock. So when you do that, um, what you're basically doing is changing, you're reducing the number of moles per the volume of solution. Um, but you totally overall, you're gonna have the same number of moles if you dilute part of it it's going to be, you know, there's going to be your original stock and then your dilution. But the total number of moles of solute in your original stock and in your dilution, the total number of moles is going to stay the same. So for that reason, we can say, right, if we multiply both sides of this equation by V, then we would say, right, N equals MV. And therefore, we can say that the molarity of the stock times the volume of the stock equals the molarity of the dilution times the volume of the dilution. And a lot of times we want to know what sort of volume of stock we need in order to make a certain volume of dilution. So uh, there are other ways to use this equation, but this is those sort of the most common thing. A lot of times we want to know what volume of a stock of solution do we need in order to make a volume of some dilution? Um, and the volume of stock, right? If we isolate volume of stock over here, we see that it equals the, well, the volume of the dilution times the ratio of the molarities, the molarity of the dilution over the original molarity of the stock. Um, and, and this is just based on this idea that between the dilution and the stock, the total number of moles stays constant. Um, so uh, this is uh, very important to understand. And uh, that brings us to our last topic, um, which is solubility curves. So our last topic is solubility curves. And these basically tell solubility is a measure of how well a solvent can dissolve a solute. Um, so if it can dissolve a lot of solute, it's got a high solubility. And if it can dissolve only a little of solute, it can, it's got a low solubility. Um, and we uh, typically measure this in these charts with the, that have these kind of, that have the curves and the charts typically have an axis like this. And on one side we have, on the vertical side, we have the solubility. And then on the horizontal axis, we uh, usually have temperature. And then you can, uh, determine what the solubility is for something based on where it falls along this curve. Um, and solid and liquid solutes have direct solubility curves. Which means their curves sort of look uh, like this. 
something like that. Uh, it could be, it also can be, doesn't have to be a curve. It could be, it could be a straight line like this, but it's something that tends to go up. Uh, and it doesn't have to be that steep. It can be shallow, right? These things, they all have, that's what well, this is a direct curve because it means as the temperature goes up, the solubility goes up. But gas solutes have inverse solubility curves. So something that looks more like that or like this, right? So as, as the temperature goes up, the solubility goes down, right? So if, if they go in the same direction, that's a, called a direct proportion. And if they go the opposite direction like this, that's called an inverse proportion. Um, and uh, li liquid and gas solutes tend to be direct and gas, I'm uh, sorry, solid and liquid solutes tend to have this direct proportionality and gas solutes tend to have this inverse proportionality. Um, and that, finally, that just brings us to a couple words which I could have mentioned earlier, but we have, I'll mention them now, they're called um, saturated and unsaturated solutions. Um, so if, it's, if a solution is saturated, it means it's holding the maximum possible solute, the maximum uh, amount, maybe we should say maximum amount possible of solute. And if it's unsaturated, uh, it's the opposite. It means it could hold some more solute. Um, and a lot of times a good way to think about this is, you know, imagine like a, a towel or something. If a towel is soaking up some water, right? Um, you know, if that towel uh, can hold some more water, if it's not completely soaked, uh, then it's unsaturated. You can still put some more water in that towel. But if that towel if is completely soaked, if you, it's not going to hold any more water, right? You keep putting some more water on it. It's not going to absorb any more water, right? That water is just going to sort of, um, is not going to go into the fabric of the towel. Um, and that, that's what, that's what these curves tell us. If you're, if you're on this curve, if, if um, you're on that line of the curve, then you're at, then that's the, then you're saturated. But if you're below the curve, then you're unsaturated. Um, and that's the, those are the sort of the basics of this, and hopefully you can use that to work on the review sheet. Uh, okay, thank you.